Most ancient cultures around the world talk about enlightenment of the mind and body, regeneration process. Each is expressing the very same truth but via various symbolisms and codes, as if this is something that cannot be told in a simple manner. Most likely it is not because what this process entails is great deal of individualization and interpretation. In Christianity it is Christ oil or anointing the head if we refer to Jesus' teachings. In Hindu and Buddhism, it is the bosom of lotus flower that blooms with thousand petals. In ancient Mu doctrines, it is referred as the uncreation of self to access superconsciousness. The most ancient Eastern spiritual texts, the Vedas of India, tell us that the process of spiritual awakening by which one attains truth, awareness, is called self-realization. The self-realized person lives in direct experience of reality. This is called Janana. Primitive Christians, the Essenes, fully realized and taught the great truth that Christ was a substance, an oil or ointment contained especially in the spinal cord, consequently in all parts of the body, as every nerve in the body is directly or indirectly connected with the wonderful river that flows out of Eden, the upper brain, to water the garden. It is worth noting that the concept of sacred secretion is not limited to just these few examples. In fact, it can be found in various forms and traditions throughout the world. In Hinduism, the concept of sacred secretion is represented by the term Amrita, which refers to a divine nectar that is believed to grant immortality and enlightenment. According to Hindu mythology, Amrita is produced during a special ceremony called the churning of the ocean, in which the gods and demons work together to extract the nectar from the depths of the ocean. In Buddhism, the concept of sacred secretion is represented by the term ambrosia, which refers to a divine substance that is believed to grant enlightenment and liberation from suffering. According to Buddhist teachings, ambrosia can be attained through the practice of meditation and the cultivation of mindfulness, compassion and wisdom. The secret book of John relates Christ's description of the divine feminine as the power of God Almighty. She is the first power. She preceded everything, and came forth from the Father's mind as forethought of all. Her light resembles the Father's light, as the perfect power. She is the image of the perfect and invisible Virgin Spirit. She is the first power, the glory Barbello, the perfect glory among the worlds, the emerging glory. She glorified and praised the Virgin Spirit, for she had come forth through the Spirit. She is the first thought image of the Spirit. She became the universal womb, for she precedes everything, the common parent, the first humanity, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here described as the divine power of God Himself. This power is maternal in its character, universal womb, she, the common parent, and all-powerful as the first emanation of God. More so, she is pure, virgin, and she glorifies purity. So ancient Christian tradition seems to tell us that the Holy Spirit is actually the Divine Mother. The early Christians knew that the scriptures, whether written in ancient Hebrew or the Greek, were allegories, parable or fables, based on the human body fearfully and wonderfully made. These adepts knew that the secretion, gray matter, creative that issues, secretes, from the cerebrum, was the source and cause of the physical expression called man. And they knew that the River of Jordan was symbolized in the spinal cord and that the Dead Sea was used to symbolize the sacred plexus at the base of the spinal column where the Jordan spinal cord ends, typifying the entrance of Jordan into the Dead Sea. The thick, oily and salty substance composing the sacral plexus may be likened unto crude petroleum, petra, mineral or salt and oleum, Latin for oil, and the thinner substance, oil or ointment in spinal cord, may be compared with coal oil. And when this oil is carried up and crosses the Ida and Pingala, two fluid nerves that end in a cross in medulla oblongata, where it contacts the cerebellum, Golgotha, the place of the skull. This fluid is refined, as coal oil is refined, to produce gasoline, a higher rate of motion that causes the ascension of the airship. When the oil, ointment, is crucified, to crucify means to increase in power a thousandfold, not to kill. It remains two days and a half, the moon's period in a sign, in the tomb, cerebellum, 
and on the third day ascends to the pineal gland that connects the cerebellum with the optic thalamus, the central eye in the throne of God, that is the chamber overtopped by the hollow hallowed, caused by the curve of the cerebrum, the most high of the body, which is the temple of the living God, the living vital substance which is a precipitation of the breath of life breathed into man, therefore the holy whole ghost or breath. Every twenty-eight and one-half days, when the moon is in the sign of the zodiac that the sun was in at the birth of the native, there is a seed or psycho, physical germ born in the or out of, the solar plexus, the manger, and this seed is taken up by the nerves or branches of the pneumogastric nerve and becomes the fruit of the tree of life. 